Welcome to DIY Nautical Dream with Priscilla and Rich. Together, we're taking this 1990 Endeavor 52. She was neglected when we bought her, sitting on the hard for about eight years, rotting away with no attention, no maintenance. We're going to take this boat and try to bring her back to her former glory. And one day, she'll be a thing of beauty again, sailing around the world to tropical destinations and beyond. But first... We need to get her fixed up to a point where we can live aboard and continue on with some of the major repairs waiting ahead of us. So if you like this sort of thing, come on in and see what's in store in this week's video update. Okay, maybe that was a little over the top. Anyways, we'll go ahead and get our next video started. Welcome back to another exciting and thrill-filled adventure with DIY Nautical Dream. Hi guys, welcome back. If you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe down below. And please watch our video from the very beginning up until the end. Okay? Hi guys. guys, welcome, welcome back. back. I'm Priscilla. And I'm Rich. Together, Together we, we make DIY Nautical, Nautical Dream. So, let's go straight to our project this week. Oh yeah, we got some stuff going on this time, huh? Mm-hmm. A little messy. Yep, so we're going to be installing the last two tick core filler plugs. Oh yeah, that's going to be a yep. fun time. Mm -hmm. This should be interesting and messy, oh, yeah. like always. I think it'll be fun, but uh, it's going to be a mess for sure. Uh -huh. So, yeah, tight quarters up there. So, thanks again to Marco, a.k.a. Kuya. Yay! My coworker. Thanks for the tip using the teak fillers as the core. Now, we're going to try that out. So, see how it works out. Mm -hmm. This will involve more thickened epoxy and more... Glorious sanding. Oh, yeah, we're going to do some grinding up in there. Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff's going to have to happen. Right up underneath the vinyl, it's a tight fit up in there. It's going to make a lot of mess. Mm -hmm. This is one of those jobs that I've been kind of putting off for a while. So yep. we just want to get in there, knock it out, get it done, mm -hmm. and move on. Yeah, by the way, nobody's going to see it anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Probably don't even have to do it. It's been like that since we bought the boat. But yep. we want to do the right thing, whether anybody sees it or not. Exactly. We always got to do our good quality work as best that our ability mm -hmm. will allow us to. And uh, mm -hmm. whether somebody sees it or not, we want to know that we did yep. the right thing. So It's going to be a lot of sore neck action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not new. It uh, seems like everything we've been doing lately has been up overhead and uh -huh. a lot of twisting and bending. So yep. just got to get it done. Neck stuck. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get through it eventually. So Yep. And we are planning to fiberglass over all of the core repairs. Yes, we're definitely going to put a couple layers of fiberglass over all that once it's all done. Mm -hmm. Seal it in, lock it in place, prevent any moisture. And it's just we're going to tighten everything up in there. And so if anybody ever does a survey over that spot where they're tapping it, we want it to sound out good. So, yep. all right. It's Sounds gonna be, fun, huh? Yeah, this is going to be overhead wet layup. So Marco's kind of been giving me some tips on how to do it. So. This time we'll try to do a little bit different, but we'll wet out the fiberglass in advance and then lay it up. So. All right, so stay tuned, guys. We're going to show you our update this week's video. Yep, we'll see you in a little bit. It's going to be fun. Okay, we're continuing to work on the overhead repair. And this is the section where they cut it away for the light base to have more room to sit flush. And so what we're doing now 
is we have the two plugs that we're putting in the the larger one here and then the one that's in the middle and then the one on the far right there it has already been installed and cured fully now we're working on the center position and the far left large position we have very heavily applied the thickened epoxy on the base here underneath and I'm preparing to push it into place and so once I do that it's going to ooze out even farther. So that's what we're getting ready to, to do next. I'm going to put on another pair of gloves and then we'll show you guys how it turns out. Sorry about the lighting. It's kind of hard to hold a light and do all this at the same time. So this is gonna be one of those messy jobs. No doubt about it. We want to see lots of squeeze out. That means we have plenty of thickened epoxy on the back side. I applied quite a bit, but I know that some of it's also being forced into the honeycomb on the sides because the honeycomb was also left open uh, by the previous mechanic that did this horrible job. So we're trying to seal the honeycomb up as well as get this piece of wood in here. And this section of wood is actually going to be the core so instead of balsa or honeycomb or anything like that we're just we're just using a piece of teak we had a little heavier than probably needed but we're all right with that we're okay with that I think that's about what we're going to go with. So I'm just going to fair in the rest of the epoxy that's squeezing out. I'll just fair it in. Because we're going to have to sand all this before we put the fiberglass over it anyway. So we'll need this to cure up really good. All right, we're going to go ahead and fair it in off camera. And we'll show you how it turns out when we're done fairing it in. I'll show you in a little bit. All right, let's see how it looks now. Okay, so that turned out pretty good. I fared it in best I can. And then I kind of leveled it out with the tongue depressor or popsicle stick. Once that's all nice and cured, we're going to go ahead and sand it nice. Just make it more and more flush and also scuff it up really well so that when we go ahead to, wear, to lay our fiberglass cloth over that, it'll be a nice repair. Even if it just cures like that, it's already better than what was in there before. So that there is what we're going to call our version of a core replacement. <laughs> it's a little bit crude, but hey, it's going to work out just fine. And we're, we're not trying to make a racing boat, so this section here is going to be a little heavier than usual, but it's better than having that exposed core that was in there before. So we'll see how this cures up, and then we'll sand it out and see what it looks like then. All right, so that's not too bad. And so here's the area we're looking at is right up here. Okay, and that's where that really ugly light housing was sitting, so... Once we get this repair done, we're obviously going to put something really nice in there for a light fixture. we got to do it right. we got to do it justice. It's got to be better than it was. And we got to do something really cool to make it that thing of beauty status. All right, so we'll see how this turns out. All right, let's see how it cured up. Oh, yeah. That turned out pretty good. So here's the large repair, large hole we had to fill in. We filled that in with just a piece of teak. Smaller one, piece of teak. And then I leveled this area out right here with thickened epoxy. And below that is another piece of teak. Only reason I use teak to fill this in right here, here, and here. Basically, I used that as our core material. They were pieces I already had cut up. Otherwise, I would have just used regular plywood. 
and stacked it in there and epoxy coated it so it was sealed but we already had these pieces laying around so figured why not see we had a few other pieces right here we were going to try and fit in there these are just scraps left over from other projects So let's hear it. Not bad. If we're tapping from the top, it's probably all going to sound the same. So we got a pretty, we got a pretty good bond in there. We used a lot of thickened epoxy. And uh, so there all the gaps and everything's been filled in. We tried to fill in all the open pieces of honeycomb coring that was left up there, exposed from the previous owner, whoever installed the light fixture. So now we need to grind it and put some fiberglass cloth over it. This is the part I'm not looking forward to, the grinding. I don't care about the fiberglass cloth, but I'm not a big fan of grinding up in here. So we're gonna Try to keep that to a minimum and rough it up really good. Try to level it out and put some cloth over it. All right, so we have it pretty well sanded now. It's pretty flush in all areas. There's a little bit like right here where I should have uh, filled in a little bit more thick and epoxy when we did the squeeze out. I probably should have fared some in there. Otherwise, it's in pretty good shape. There's a little low spot right here. So I think, I think we're just gonna go for it. Um, got to we obviously need to clean it really well with uh, acetone. So we're gonna do that next. We're gonna wipe it down and then we'll see what, after we wipe it down with acetone, we'll see what it looks like from there. I think if anything, we may just have to put a little bit of thick and epoxy on there to help forgive some of our mistakes, some of our uh, low spots in there. All in all, I think this is gonna be just fine. Uh, we just wanna put fiberglass cloth over it and we want it to have a good bond. So that's all we're really trying to do. We're not trying to mount anything here except for a light. I think we're gonna be all right. Okay, so here's that low spot I was talking about right here. We'll just put a little bit of thickened epoxy on there. And let's see. We just lost our light. But. Maybe a little bit right there. And that's a low spot because of the way they laid up the deck here. So that was already there. But So maybe we add a little bit of thickened epoxy and then uh, glass it up. Okay, right now we have our we just painted a layer of thickened epoxy on there and that's just to fill in all the low spots and it'll help the first layer of cloth have something to stick to. Okay, here we go.
Oh yeah, good times here, guys. We're loving it. All right, that's first layer. Oh yeah, here we go. More fun, second layer coming up. Oh man, it's ugly. Hopefully it works. Oh man, here we go. Oh yeah, we're having all the fun possible right now. This is what we call wet layup. <sighs> because it's wet. It's a wet one. All right. We're having all the fun in the world right now. I'm telling you that. I've been putting this off for a while, but we just had to get into it and get going. So I'll get the camera and show you a little bit closer what it looks like here in just a second. I gotta get my gloves off. <clears throat> Alright, let's take a look here. Right here, this is what we have going on. So it's just in the uh, fresh wet layup stage. And I did the I did the best I could. I really couldn't see what I was doing, but I, I know that last layer of cloth I put down a little bit too far that direction, but uh it's all right we're getting good coverage and uh our intentions are good it's going to turn out just fine so i might dab it with the brush a little bit to try to work some of the see if there's any air pockets in there there's a few i can see but all in all it looks pretty pretty decent this is not um you know this is not what we'd be using for uh structural repair but in a sense this is a structural repair so we want to try and get the air bubbles out the best we can all right, let's see here. It's always hard to tell once we put thick and epoxy underneath as a base. It's very hard to tell where and if there's air bubbles because the thick and epoxy is also white, so. I think it looks pretty good. I think we're just going to go with it. I think what I'm looking at is throwing me off are the uh, is the areas where the thick and epoxy filled in the voids, the low spots. So I think we're all right. I think we're just going to leave it as is. I could continue to mess with it and just it's going to get worse. So I think we're going to call that good. Final effort here. We're leaving it just like that. With any luck, it'll cure and we'll be good to go we don't even need to sand this we're just putting a piece of wood over the top of this so a light will mount to and this was all because somebody wanted to put that cheap light fixture up there they cut the core out of the deck to make a little recessed area for the light fixture to fit it was at best maybe a ten dollar light fixture and uh so they did a Nice bit of damage to the boat, whoever the previous owner was, it they thought that was a good idea. So anyways, we definitely don't want to do things like that. We gotta keep trying and do it right. And so one of the other things we had to do that I wasn't really happy about was we had to add this little strip of wood here, another piece of scrap wood. Um, because as it turns out, the piece, the base where the old light fixture that mounts basically right here it mounts in this area and they didn't have that and that's when we were when we were removing it if you remember every screw that came out of the light base in this area was a different length and we we're kind of laughing and joking around about it well that's because the piece that was long right here didn't have anything supporting it so it was just a bunch of 
screw shank hanging out in the air until it went into here. So we're hoping that our base will tie into this and we won't have anything hanging out in the air. All right, so we tried to do it nice. We sealed the wood up really well, so it's not going to absorb any moisture or anything like that. And then we taped our electrical wiring up so it's gonna hold into place. And eventually we'll get the new light fixture in here and with any luck, we will have done better than what it was before. All right, so that's where we're at. We have that taken care of and we have this taken care of. We're really happy to have this section of the repair behind us and completed. It's all fiberglassed over. The teak core is potted in there with the thickened epoxy. We did the best we could. We feel like it was a great result. Sure, there could have been better, but with our limited experience, it's about as good as we could have done with the skills we currently have at this time. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our videos. We really appreciate it. so we'll come back guys yep see the old hat right here yeah we got a little <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit not fun i'll yeah, tell you that but, oh my gosh man yeah we we uh we struggled in that area but that's okay now we remembered why we tried to avoid <laughs> yeah. that repair we did not want to do that so but we got it we hard, i think the hard part's out of the way now so uh, that part anyway yeah that particular part yep yeah and the thick core fillers went in nicely yeah putting that teak the teak plugs in there thanks for the tip kuya uh -huh. and uh yeah that worked out pretty good so we're gonna be hopefully getting better at that at some point yep but for now we're you know i don't know of any more repairs like that on the boat but based on what we've seen what the previous owners have been doing to this boat we could expect more surprises down the road in other areas oh, yeah. so yeah yep. it's good and experience along the way yeah and lots of sanding so yeah we had to sand that area because after that we after the plugs cured we put filler in there with the thickened epoxy mm -hmm. kind of level the whole area out and then over that we put the fiberglass on there which you guys saw that was fun yep. a little drippy and all that and after the fiberglass cured then we had to sand it again so we can get ready to, for the painting process mm -hmm. so so you are getting better of doing fiberglass in your yep. name. good job yeah i feel like we're gonna have some more need to have better experience of that down the road i just mm -hmm. have that thought in the back of my head that hey guy you might want to get good at fiberglassing we watch a lot of sail life watch a lot of onboard lifestyle those guys are like fiberglass professionals mm -hmm. we can only hope to do as good a work as they do someday but for right now we're better than where we were when we started so yep, yep we're learning along the way uh-huh and like mm -hmm. i said nobody's ever going to see it anyways exactly but we always want to have high quality work we don't want everyone to have to go back and redo one of our repairs over again later. Yeah, so next time we will be painting this area. Yep, so that'll be good. Have it paint, get ready to paint it. Mm -hmm. And uh, overall, what did you think? We did good progress? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I feel pretty good about it. Nice feeling mm -hmm. of accomplishment. That was one of those repair jobs that I was really putting off because I knew it was going to be hard. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. If you are not subscribed yet, Please subscribe down below. Right down here. <laughs> click, 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 click. And, like I always said, please 
watch our video from the very beginning up until the end. Yep, we really appreciate that. Watch ours really helps. Yep, subscribers helps. And comment. What do you guys think about the repair? Do you guys like it? You know, what would you have done differently? Obviously, I know there's a better way out there. We just don't have like access to the honeycomb core filler. That would have been the right way to do it. Vacuum bagging, that would have been the right way. We just don't have access or experience. All right, so stay tuned, guys. We'll see you next week. Yep. Thanks for watching. See ya. That's it guys, see you next week, bye. <laughs> That's going in the outtakes. Whoa. Yep. Dang, if I only hit record, man. <laughs> I think you did. Okay. <laughs>